where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. I just started a series this morning in the first service on the spirit of adoption. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23 being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever the word seed is a Greek word sperma sperma means life sperma means genes or hereditary life genes or hereditary uh, the word sperma is where the English people have the word sperm and the sperm is what carries the DNA of a man and so you're born of the sperm, the sperma, the seed, the life of God. Meaning you and God share the same DNA. What is in God is in you. Why? Because you are from him. You are of his genes. You come from his genealogy. The word gene has to do with hereditary. That means all that you inherited is from the source, from God who is a source of your life born of god being born of the word of god being born of the incorruptible seed of god born of the hereditary of god born of the life of god you are born of god first john chapter 5 verse number one to four whosoever believeth that jesus is the christ is born of god what does it take to be born of God? To believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Christ means the one who died, who was buried, and who rose again triumphantly for my justification. Whosoever believeth that message, not whosoever believeth in the message of hellfire, there's no salvation in hellfire. Not whosoever believeth in the message of sinners in the hands of an angry God, there's no salvation in sinners in the hands of an angry God salvation is only in a man his name is jesus when you hear what he has done for you when you hear what he has done for you not what he will do for you what he has done for you and you believe that he has done it for you the power of his life brings you back to life you hear the message not the message of hellfire not the message of sinners in the hands of an angry god there's no more anger with God. The last time I checked, God is happy. He has been pleased by the sacrifice of his son. He has been pleased by the death of Christ. And remember, that death is not that That death is my death. When he died, I died. When he was buried, I was buried. When he rose, I rose. When he ascended, I ascended. Where he's glorified, I am glorified. What he has, I have. What he can do, I can do. Where he is, I am. And all that is his is mine. When you hear that message and you believe that message, you are saved. Amen. Amen. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loved him that begot, loved him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Now, not the Ten Commandments. He will soon tell you what the commandment is. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. They are not burdensome. Remember the law of Moses is a yoke that neither Peter nor their fathers could bear. But the commandment of God is not grievous, it's not burdensome, it's not laborious. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Next verse. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith puts us in the overcoming. How did that faith come? It came by hearing the message of Christ. Romans 1.17, therefore faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the message of Christ. The message of his death, the message of his burial, the message of his resurrection produces faith in a man for salvation. Next verse. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Is there a believer in this church? You believe that Jesus is the Son of God? You have overcome the world. You didn't hear what I said. I didn't say you will overcome the world. I say you have overcome the world. He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God has already overcome the world. 
Why? You are born of God. You are begotten of God. You came from God. You originated from God. And you function in God. You are born of the spirit. You are born of the incorruptible seed. By the word of God. James 1.18 tells us. Of his own will begot he us. With the word of truth. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. So he's referring to our being born of God. The spirit of adoption. Born again is born of God. It does not mean born twice. It's been born of the spirit. It means to be born of God. To be born again means to be born of the spirit or to be born of God. It's not twice born. It's not born twice. It's born of God. Again, in the Greek means anew. To be born anew. To be born from above. To be born of God. Again, remember, the Bible is not literally an English book. So sometimes some English words may not mean exactly what you saw. And that's why there's a need for interpreting the Bible. That's why there's need for Bible teachers and the teaching of God's word. Glory to God. So how is a man born again? A man is born again by believing the gospel. A man is born again by believing the gospel. And I'm looking at bringing to your, to your notice 70 lies people hear in church every Sunday. We started with one lie in the first service. You do not give your life to Christ. Christ gave his life to you. Second lie. And somebody said, if you do not pay your tithe, you cannot make heaven full stop. That is a capital robust lie. That is a capital robust lie. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. It has nothing to do with what you do. And let nobody make a fool of your intelligence. You went to school and you can read the Bible for yourself. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish. John 3.16. It's as fundamental as that. Romans chapter 10. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's as easy as that. Those are already two witnesses. So if that man insists that whoever does not pay tithe will not make heaven full stop. And somebody tried to tell me where he got his theology from and it's a laugh. And I said to that brother, where did he get his theology from? He said he got his theology from bringing disjointed scriptures together to form a scripture. Uh, where did he get the lie from? I'm sure you're waiting to hear. You have robbed me by not paying tithe. You have robbed me, this whole nation, Malachi. Then he took it and connected to revelation. All robbers shall not enter the kingdom of God. Are you seeing that dishonesty? He took Malachi and took revelation. The two last books. And married them by force. So now out of that he said you will not make heaven full stop. These are two verses in two different contexts dealing with two different issues how can somebody be so far from the truth when he said you have robbed god he wasn't even talking to believers he was talking to the priest in those days because the book of malachi was addressing the priest you check chapter one of malachi verse one you will see he was addressing the priest in chapter three he was addressing the priest he wasn't talking to the church he wasn't talking to believers in Revelation 22, where he says all liars and all robbers and all those. He was not talking to believers. He was talking to people that are not born again. A man that is born again is not a robber. He's not a liar. He's a new creation. Glory to God. If you want to argue along those lines, then you have to delete John 3.16 from your Bible and rewrite it as, For God so loved the world that he gave tithe, that whosoever does not pay tithe, shall perish and not have everlasting life otherwise if that is not true then that statement cannot be true because truth is universal and truth is absolute are you born again because you pay tight no but god commended his love towards us in that while we were yet seen as christ 
died for us. And the death of Christ is our qualifier for eternal life. If that is said, we shout a good amen. amen. So that's lie number two. Somebody say, I am born again by believing the gospel. Say, I have believed the gospel. What is the gospel? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also you have received, wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. The gospel that saves. The gospel that saves. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, number 1, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures that is the gospel that saves he died he was buried and he rose his resurrection is our salvation oh glory to god that first corinthians chapter 15 verse number 14 and if christ be not risen then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain so our faith is predicated on his resurrection not on tithes his resurrection is a guarantee for our faith if christ is not risen your faith is baseless because the basis for faith is the resurrection of christ chapter 15 verse number 17 and if christ be not raised your faith is vain you are yet in your sins so the guarantee that you are free from sin is that christ is raised and you believe the message you believe the gospel romans chapter 4 verse 25 who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification his resurrection is our justification chapter 5 verse 1 therefore being justified by faith not by tight we are not justified by tight we are justified by faith yes, sir. we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access into this grace wherein we stand we stand in grace and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God somebody shout glory in this house we rejoice we rejoice in his resurrection and we are the trophies of his resurrection we are the products of his resurrection we are the outcome of his resurrection hey we are what his resurrection produced hey Gebo Yanamaha, you are the best god can ever create god can never improve on what he has done out of the new creation the new creation is god's best product shall glory somebody yes so if somebody says you don't pay your tithe, he has a problem with money. His problem is money. When money becomes more important than Jesus, then that man has a problem. And the Bible says from such people flee. From such people flee. In the book of 1 Timothy, he said when a man becomes greedy or filthy looker and becomes greedy about money, flee from such people. Is there in your Bible? When money becomes more important than Jesus, that preacher has exposed his heart. When Brother Paul will say, though we or an angel come from heaven to preach any other thing than what we have preached, let him be a cause. If Paul can place that kind of strong statement on his own life, then nobody has an excuse. He even said if an angel from heaven, not even from earth, He said, let him be a cost. You know the meaning of the word a cost? Anathema. Anathema means cut him off. Disconnect from him. Higabadaga. Don't let him pollute you. Say, I am saved. Because I believe. In the gospel. Jesus died. He was buried. On the third day, he rose again for my justification. I didn't hear a powerful amen. And I didn't hear a happy amen. Somebody say, I am born of the Spirit of God. Now shout it louder, I am born of God. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The word led is the word ago in the Greek, A-G-O. It's not the same word as in, he led me away. It's not the same word as in direction. 
there is direction in it but that's not the that's not the whole word the word there led is the word ago all right now it implies someone who bears you on himself to be led of god means god is carrying you on himself it means union with god He's referring to something stronger than direction. That's why first of all in Romans 8.2, it says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free. Unity with Jesus has freed me from unity with sin and death. I'm now united with Jesus. And by reason of my union, I have been disconnected from sin and death. I'm now in union with Christ. That's the pretext. That's the pretext. That's how he began the discourse. In verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin destroyed sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of God may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So now, based on that union, I'm led. God bears me on himself. Wherever God goes, I go. Wherever God is not, I am not. Why? I am led of God. That's my nature. In that Romans chapter 8 verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So, I don't have to be led in the spirit. The leading in the spirit is my nature. I am not in the flesh. I am in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell where in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his and if christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness we have the indwelling of the spirit that's what he's dealing with here the indwelling of the spirit so because of this indwelling verse 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but the spirit we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father to be led of God means to be in union with God. It means God bears you all. So led means to receive what we have received. Verse 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The spirit of adoption has made us children of God. Sometimes you have some people say, well, you're a child of God, but you're not a son of God. Uh, there's a difference between child of God and son of hell. Stop that. Child of God means where you originated from. You came out of God. By virtue of coming out of God, you're a child of God. Son of God means inheritance. It means you have been, you, by virtue of being born of God, you have inherited what is God's. As many as received into them, gave you power to become. Exactly. So it's not maturity. It's not maturity. A son of God is not maturity. Okay? It's not maturity. Child or children is to explain the conception. Child of the spirit was used for Jesus too. It has nothing to do with stages. Jesus was a child of the Holy Ghost. He was a child of the spirit. It has nothing to do with stages. It has something to do with conception. So, he mentions the spirit of adoption. He says, because of what Jesus has done in us, we have received the spirit of adoption. And because we have the spirit of adoption, our cry is Abba Father. It's important to know what sons of God mean. What is the meaning of the word son of God? Because that's very important. It's like you hear people sing in the church a song that comes out of mental agitation. And in the first service, I dealt with mental agitation. Get the CD, it will help you. Who is there like you? Oh, God. You have created us in your likeness. Who is there like you? That song is mentally agitated. First of all, you say, who is like him? Then you now say, we've been created in his likeness. Then you now say, who is like him? To be created in his likeness means we are like him church people sing those songs in the church world that song is sung which means we sing what we don't know and we sing what we don't mean okay 
You hear churches sing songs like, um, Jesus, not the only Son of God. Oh. I be mean, not true. And after that, in the same service, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. It doesn't add up. It's mental agitation. Once upon a time he was the son of God, but he gave up that identity one day so that he can become the firstborn among many brethren. To all of us with Jesus, we are sons of God. I didn't hear somebody shout hallelujah. We don't just sing songs because somebody popular wrote them. Even if the person is not popular, but he writes what agrees with the New Testament, we sing. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Pentecostal voices. Almighty God, that is your name. Religious voice. I have news for you. Once upon a time, Jesus said, Father, show them that the glory you gave me while I was with you before the world began, I have given it to them. Oh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Somebody say, I'm the carrier of God's glory. Christ in me, the embodiment of God's glory. I didn't hear your amen like a believer. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar, uh -huh. to show for the praises of, uh -huh. who has called us, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So after we sing that we are a peculiar people, a holy nation, after in the same service, holiness, holiness is what I long for. <laughs> Mental agitation. He has made us holy. We are his holiness. Touch your neighbor, say your holiness. Touch your neighbor, say your holiness. It's not a man that wear choir uniform with a Pentecostal cap that is his holiness. You are his holiness. Peculiar people. Chosen generation. Royal priesthood. Called out of darkness into his marvelous glory to God. Somebody shout glory. Here in the same service. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Then you hear in the same service. Creating me a clean heart. Oh Lord, a renewer of spirit, 2,000 years behind time. You are in David's day. Cast me not away from your presence, oh God. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. I will never leave nor forsake you. The Spirit will abide with you for how long? There are songs you shouldn't sing anymore. Use a big broomstick and sweep them out of your house. We have to start censoring what the people are writing. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. It's the same thing. It means nothing. To hobo ho. Glory to God. I say glory to God. We sing songs that reflect our identity in Christ. And amen. So if it is not reflecting our identity, it is safer to sing a secular song. Because at least when you are singing a secular song, you know that this one is not me. But when it is deceptive, it looks like you, but it is not you. It can confuse your identity. Amen. Jesus is the one called the son. So to know the son, you have to look at Jesus. 
John 1 18 let's get doctrine now no man has seen God at any time the only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father he has declared him the word only begotten son you severally in the Gospels but it's also used in the epistles to refer to the gospel. The only begotten son. For example, John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, only begotten son. Those words are used several times. Severally, the coinage is with John by the Holy Ghost. The word only begotten son in the Greek is the word monogenua. Monogenua. M-O-N-O-G-E-N-A-U. Monogenua or monogenes. Monogenua or monogenes. Only begotten. To speak of uniqueness. Something not common. Jesus is unique and is not common. Jesus is the only one who was God who became a man. Nobody else. That's why it's the monogenua. Everybody else came out of a man and a woman. Jesus is the only one that no man and woman, sperm or egg was used in bringing him to earth. It was God manifest in the flesh. So we want to see how Jesus was referred to particularly. And the precedence is in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word was with God. The word was God. Meaning the word predated creation. The word predated creation. The word was with God. The word was God. The word predated creation. Meaning, when the word became flesh was not when the word began. The word began before the word began. All things were made by him, the word. And without him, the word was nothing made that was made. So that word that became flesh, Isaiah the prophet called him Emmanuel. God manifest to be with us. So Jesus is God with us. Oh, Jesus is God who became a man. So John used those words. Now see how the angel saw it. Matthew 1, 20 to 21. But while he thought on this thing, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee, marry thy wife. Marry thy wife. They never marry, but angel called him wife. See the inaccuracy of angels. For that which is conceived in eyes of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, which prophet? Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 7, 14. So when the angel appeared to Joseph, he quoted from the prophecy of Isaiah. He quoted from the prophecy of Isaiah. And angels cannot be fully relied on. No. Because angels don't understand salvation. So you can't rely on angels. So when people start saying an angel appeared to me, an angel spoke to me, you need to be careful how you follow such people. Because if you follow them and you're not careful, you will go very deep into heresy. Did you hear that? Because even this angel was quoting from Isaiah. They don't have a mind of their own. They don't have revelation knowledge. We are the university of angels. They learn from us. They don't know it all. Even when they came on the day Jesus was born and they celebrated and sang praises and worship, they were worshiping but they didn't have clarity of what was going on. Somebody says, how do you know that? Very clearly now, brother Peter told us the angels desire to look into salvation. Of which salvation the angels desire to look into. So the angels don't even know salvation. They are still learning. Angels are still learning about salvation. Where are they learning it from? From us. Why? Because we have revelation. Eyes have not seen, ears have not had, neither has they caught to the heart of man. But God has revealed them to us by the spirit. We have received the spirit of adoption. Why? Because we are born of God. So we have access into the deep things of God. Angels don't have that kind of access. So angels rely on us to hear the things we know so they can also educate themselves. Angels rely on us to learn and to hear from us. Thank you, Lord. So the angel was carrying that instruction based on the prophecy of the prophet in Isaiah 7.14. The angel was carrying out Isaiah 7.14. 
that God was going to be with us. So whatever the angel was referring to did not begin existing in the womb of Mary. That baby in the womb of Mary didn't begin from the womb of Mary. He predated Mary before Mary was born. He's been around. He is God. God in the womb of a woman. Whoa. What a mystery. So the angel used the word God with us. John used the word, the word became flesh. The word is used again for Jesus upon his resurrection. Acts 13, 33. God had fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he had raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Which day is Luke referring to here in Acts? Huh? resurrection all right this is the resurrection next verse and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead now no more to return to corruption but he said on this wise i will give you the sure mercies of david this is referring to after his resurrection this day have i begotten you the womb of mary and the resurrection two events this day have I begotten thee was resurrection from the dead. And this was the prophecy in Psalms chapter 2 verse 7. Quoted in Hebrews 1 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Hebrews 5 5. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. That is the person that made him a high priest. When he rose from the dead, he became the high priest over the church. We have a high priest today that is passing to the heavens. His name is Jesus. He's a mediator of the covenant and is a guarantee for eternal salvation. What kind of salvation? Yeah, referring to resurrection. That's the same person in Hebrews 1.3 now said, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. I have news for you. Seated in this building today, your sins are totally purged. If Jesus didn't purge your sins, he wouldn't have sat down. Sitting down means I finished the work. He didn't purge it before. He purged it before now and after. Your sins are totally purged. You didn't hear that. Your sins are totally purged. I say you didn't hear that. Your sins are totally purged. I say you didn't hear that. Your sins are totally purged. And when he purged our sins, what did he do? He sat down. When a man sits down, it means work has finished. There's no more work to do. And right now he's still sitting down. He has not stood up since that day when he sat down. Because job has finished. Praise God. My sins are eternally purged. They were purged. They are purged. They will be purged. Always purged. He purged our sins. He sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. As the intercessor of the church. And he saves to the uttermost. He doesn't save for some time. He saves to the uttermost. Those who come by faith. We came by faith in the gospel. So he saves and guarantees our salvation forever. We don't guarantee ourselves. He is our guarantor. Say, I hear you. Glory. If you're understanding, shout glory. glory. He saved us. We didn't get saved. He saved us. He's a sota. He's a savior. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Jesus saved me. So, begotten by Mary's birth, begotten by resurrection, and in both instances, is called the Son of God. John 1, 14, the only begotten of the Father refers to his conception the only the only the only refers to conception refers to incarnation only there has nothing to do with numbers it has something to do with uniqueness uniqueness not numbers referring to incarnation meaning that god became a man deals with the deity of christ the only begotten of the father which is in the bosom not which was which is in the bosom of the father so he is god only begotten jesus is god only begotten or god that became a man john three eighteen. 
He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He is not going to be condemned one day. He is condemned already. It's not when we get to heaven we will know who will make it. We know right now who will make it. If you don't believe in Jesus, you are condemned already. Meaning, heaven at last is a lie. It's another lie in the church. Heaven at last. They are using it to tie Christians and make caricature of them. It's a control weapon. Heaven at last. It's a control weapon. That word, heaven at last, is a control weapon. When they want to control you and want to cast aspersions on what Christ has done to you, they now say, I pray. I pray. I pray. I pray. They put on a face that looks like, you know, religion. I pray that after all this seriousness and after all this going to church all the time, you will make heaven at last. They are casting an aspersion on your faith. It's not heaven at last, it's heaven at first. He has quickened us, he has raised us up to be seated together with him where? In heaven when? Right now. Heaven at last, they use it to control. When you're looking like you're beginning to enjoy the liberty in Christ, you're beginning to break forth and you're enjoying what Christ has done. They look at you and say, my brother, my brother, I pray, I pray that at the end, at the end, the road is narrow. Few that go through that at the end. They bring all kinds of scriptures disjointed and use them to cast doubt in your heart. To mess up what Christ has done. And only untutored Christians will fall for that spell. Not power citizens. If you want to see our stubbornness, try yours when it comes to what Christ has done. We will show you that we are not only stubborn, we are radicals. Because we know better. Knowledge makes you sound arrogant. I better sound arrogant in knowledge than be humble in ignorance. All right, so begotten is no use for numbers. It refers to the uniqueness of his birth. He didn't come from human descent. He is deity. That's why it's called the only begotten. It refers to him being deity. First Timothy 3, 16, without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifest in the flesh. Deity came into humanity. First John chapter 4, verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, his only begotten son. John puts it, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is called son of God because he came from God. He is the son, the only begotten of God. Hey, only begotten of God. In John 1, 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glorious of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of what? Grace and truth. Grace which is truth. Full of grace which is truth. The word father is the Greek word Abba. Father is the Greek word Abba, which means source. Father is Abba, which means source. 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 When you say somebody is my father, what you are saying is somebody is my source. Abba. Abba. Father. It's from father you have life. So Jesus calls him father. Now pay attention to these things. Jesus was the first person who referred to God as Father in the whole Bible. Nobody ever called God Father until Jesus showed up. And it had to do with parentage. Jesus referred to God as Father. Why? Because he's the first to make such reference. Nobody else could. No prophet could call God Father. Not even Moses with all of his power could call God Father. Only Jesus. And he was the first to call God Father. So Jesus is the only begotten of God and he rightly calls God Father because he is the only begotten of the Father. So since he's the only begotten of the Father, he's the only one and the first one who could call God Father. Nobody else was begotten of the Father. Not Moses, not Elijah, not Jeremiah. Jesus was the first to be begotten of the Father. 
meaning if there's anybody that has the audacity and the right to unveil the father to us will be his son who is jesus christ so whatever jesus said about the father is the final authority all the prophets just spoke as they were moved by the holy ghost but jesus came and revealed the father to us in his practical life praise the lord Even when he formed his disciples, how many of you know that even the disciples of Jesus they didn't call God Father? For example, Peter, the son of Bajona, Simon Bajona, meaning the father of Simon was Bajona. You hear about the sons of Zebedee, the sons of Zebedee. Zebedee was their father. You hear of Judas, the son of Iscariot. The father of Judas was Iscariot. Judas had a father. Peter had a father. All the disciples had a father. Only Jesus could only call God Father. Jesus came from God. He came from the Father. He is from the Father. Okay? In Matthew, the Bible refers to God as your father 20 times. And 15 times, my father. Your father, 20 times. 15 times, my father, in Matthew. In Mark, two times, your father. Two times, my father. Jesus making reference, okay? In Luke, your father, four times. My father or the father, eight times. But in John, my father or the father, 80 times. Meaning John was the one that had the sole revelation of God as the father of Jesus. So we have to pay attention to brother John. That's why in John chapter 20 verse 27. Then said it to Thomas, reach it out thy finger, and behold my hand, and reach feet out thy hand, and thrust into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. He couldn't call him father. He called him my Lord and my God. Only Jesus could call God father. So in giving of the spirit, Jesus now says, I will ask my father and he will send another comforter. And he is the begotten of the father. Twice, first incarnation, second resurrection. So now, your father, my father. He said to Mary, hold me not back. I have not yet gone to my father. That is the first time. That is the first time now he's introducing a new thought into the mind of Mary and into his disciples. My father, your father. Before then, he was my Lord, my God. But now after his resurrection, he now announces to Mary, tell my brethren that I'm going to my father, your father. Meaning from now, our parentage is going to be one. That's where adoption comes. So John gives us some insight or revelation into the teachings of Jesus. Like being born of the Spirit. John lets us see that to be a child of God, you have to be born of God. So when Jesus was saying, pray after this manner, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name in the book of Luke and Matthew. Or when Jesus said in Matthew, be perfect as your Father was perfect. He was using a holy statement. He was speaking of the future in the present. It's not as if at that time it had happened. He was just telling them of realities that were going to come in the future. So not everybody is a child of God. Hear me and hear me well. Not everybody is a child of God. Because you know people say, well, you know we're all children of God. No, we are not all children of God. No. For you to be a child of God deals with parentage. That means God gave birth to you. God is the creator of everybody. He's not the father of everybody. It's one thing to create. It's another thing to father. He created everybody. But he's not the father of everybody. For God to father you, he must conceive you and give birth to you by the gospel. The only way God can be your father is when he is the one who gave birth to you through the gospel. And in fact, that's when you are actually born. The only one is existence. Real birth is in Christ. No Jesus, no life. Real life is in Christ. Outside Christ, 
no life. Outside Christ, no life. Real life is in Christ. Hallelujah. So to be son of God, in the four gospels, you must come from God. Peter didn't come from God. Judas didn't come from God. Philip didn't come from God. So in the four gospels, they were answering their father's names. So Romans 8, 14, therefore, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The word son is the word hoyos. Hoyos in the Greek, H-O-U-I-S. It means a perfect, a matured son, like a full son. So brother Paul now gives you some more teeth in Galatians chapter 4. To be called the son of God in the gospels means you came from God. But when the apostles wrote, they used concepts that explain spiritual truth. So adoption is not like adoption. In English, please pay attention. If you miss this one, you shouldn't have been in the service today. Adoption is not like adoption in English. Because in English, adoption is when you go to an orphanage home and then you look at a child who does not have a father and a mother abandoned in the orphanage home. Then you go to the government and you ask for the rights to adopt that child to become your child. That's what English adoption is. And then the government will process all the papers through their agencies and give you a document of adoption where you now take that baby and that baby now becomes your child by law. Now that's English adoption. But what happened to us is not exactly like that. What happened to us is actually far better than the English adoption. All right, so let's look at it quickly because Brother Paul gives it it in Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. So Brother Paul uses the word heir. Very important. If that Bible was my own, I will circle the word heir. The heir, he is using an explanation. But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. So now what Paul was saying is, it's not saying that God is father. We are heirs under elements. The word adoption, Paul uses a Roman terminology. It came from Latin. L-A-T-I-N. The word adoption is the Latin word patria. Patria potestes. Patria potestes. And I spell it for you so you don't write tongues. P-A-T-R-I-A. Patria. Potestes. P-O-T-E-S-T-E-S. -E -E patria potestes. That's adoption. Listen carefully to the background. In Rome, in those days, when a man has a child, he is called a patriarch. A patriarch means he has an unquestionable power over his child. And he can do anything he wants to do with that child. Anything. With nobody asking a question. In the Roman culture. It's absolute heritage. Even when he marries a woman, he is still under the control of his father. His father can stand up and tell him, come home for one week, leave that woman there. And he cannot say, excuse me. He is under the absolute control of the patriarch. That's the way it functioned in Rome, in their culture. And when brother Paul was writing Galatians, he used the Roman culture to communicate spiritual truths to them. Are you understanding and that's why it's good to go back to the history to find out what happened so you have a clear picture of what adoption is. So the patriarch had absolute parentage, absolute heritage over the child. Now, but adoption is used to secure assets. Like I need an heir, someone to take care of my assets. Let's say I'm a billionaire, I have a lot of money. And I'm looking for somebody who will take care of my assets. So, I approached the father of this son. And usually, the word adoption was used for assets. It has to do with things that you have. Inheritance. So, he goes to this patria to negotiate. And when he's negotiating for that son, it's a formal ceremony. A formal ceremony. And it usually goes through two stages. Two stages. Two stages. Number one, the monsopathio, the monsopathio, that's the first stage. The monsopathio was symbolic ceremony. We are scale and coins in the scale were weighed three times. 
And when they are weighing the scales three times, the father will look like he's not interested. Okay? In that negotiation. The father will look like he's not interested at all. But after the third time, the father will now agree. The moment the father agrees with the negotiation, at that instance, the hold of the father is broken over the son. And from that moment, that son is free and independent of the control of the father. Okay? That's the first stage. The monsopathio. The second stage is the vindicatio. In the vindicatio, the guy who did the monopathio with the father will now take that son to the magistrate who legally transfers the son to this man the magistrate will legally transfer the son to this man who has purchased him now it comes with a record and the state knows from that day it is illegal for that father to refer to that boy as his son it becomes illegal because the father's control has been broken and he has been paid and settled. So he transfers totally and forever the parentage of the son to the man who purchased. And that man can never refer to that boy as my son. And that boy can never refer to that man as his father. Please follow this because this is where Brother Paul got the concept of action. And I want to clarify. Now there are four things that happens by the vindicatio four things number one once that happens every right is gone in the family that boy doesn't have any right in that family anymore whatever the father owns that boy cannot access it any longer and he can never go back to that home anymore why it's an eternal agreement he can never go back to that family number two he is now an heir of a new estate. He's an heir of a new estate because the issue is with the estate. So he is now given a set of new things by the father. New pants, new singlets, new shirts, new shoes, new clothes, new accommodation, new everything. Everything he took from his family, he removes all and leaves it back. He now has a new family. He has given new things. Everything is new for him. Everything is new. Hey. Everything is new. Number three. This is the most critical part of the vindicatio. Your own life is totally closed. There's no reference to anything that you have had before in the past. All your records, including school, including university and colleges, everything you attended in the house of your former father, all of them are deleted and wiped. They don't exist. No reference will ever be made by legality, by government, not even by your mind. Are you permitted to think by mistake? It's totally rusticated, wiped and eradicated. So it's like the first day, everything is taken away. Nobody has any right to refer to anything that boy has done while he was with his father. Nobody has any right. In fact, if you do, you'll be sued. No such reference anymore. Number four, you are now in a new family, a new father, and a new inheritance. So Galatians chapter four, therefore, let's read now. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, different not from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. If a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So, you cannot have adoption without redemption. For there to be adoption, there must be redemption. So because you are sons, the same word used for Jesus in the gospel, you are the highest of God, 
one who owns what his father has so all the records of where you were coming from have been taken out every one of us here all your record if anybody reminds you your past you have the right to sue him because you don't have a past why redemption is being paid for the parentage of the enemy and the parentage of the devil over you is eternally broken if anybody says you have generational cause, ancestral covenant, or family foundation you have to break, is insulting your saintly dignity as a believer. There's no record of the past. If anyone be in Christ, how many things have passed away? That's exactly where they got that from the Roman culture. Every record, every mistake, every deed, every calculation or miscalculation is rusticated. You're a brand new man. Hey! Brand new man! Now say with me, I manage a new estate. I have access to a new inheritance. I have a new family. I have a new family name. You are not excited. You are not excited. Who has a new family here? Who has a new family name? I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole... Where? Where? I'm a member of a new family. I belong to a new heritage. Zazato Beletigege. Brunda Koto Putala Tapa. My new family has nothing to do with my past. The past is gone. The new has come. Egebo Jakaya. A joint heir with Christ. An heir of God. Where are the heirs of God? If they're in this building, let their amen scare the devil. All the records are gone. Don't your neighbor say all your records of the past are gone. Tell your neighbor, you will never again return to your former estate. Now tell your neighbor, Jesus was the redemption for our adoption. I didn't hear a powerful amen. So now in the new family, we have renounced every history. We have renounced every record. We have renounced the past. We don't remember it and we are not about to be reminded. So when the devil reminds you your past, tell him liar. Then remind him his future. Somebody shout, I have been adopted by redemption, provided in Christ Jesus. Amen. You're legally adopted, meaning you have access to everything. Just like Jesus, that's how we are. That's why Romans 8:16. The spirit itself beared witness with our spirit that we are the children of god by the spirit of adoption we are possessors of a person who do we possess a person our possession is a person everything jesus is is who we are our past is wiped out our past is cancelled we can never be brought again into bondage somebody lift your right hand and shout with me i am free from bondage said very loud I'm not hearing you. Can I hear you louder? Say, I have the spirit of Jesus. Say, I have the spirit of God bearing witness with my spirit. I didn't hear your amen. What is your possession? Who do you possess? Who is your inheritance? Who is your inheritance? Who is your inheritance? Who is your inheritance? So we don't come to church for things. We come to church for him. Because when we see him in him, we see us. When we see us in him, then in him, we know what we have. When we know what we have in him, then we know what we can do. And we can boldly say, I can do through who strengthens me. What is not in him is not in me. He's not sick, I'm not sick. I'm born of God. Anybody born of God here? Anybody having the same DNA with God here? Anybody adopted into Christ here? If you're in this building, let your amen come like thunder. Amen. Lift your right hand and I speak over you today. Whatever does not look like Jesus, every physical condition in your body, I command it flushed out. Amen. Flushed out. Amen. Infirmity, disease, and your spirit of infirmity, 
pain, discomfort, I bind you, come out, lose your host, get out of that body, body be loose from infirmity, be loose from sickness, be loose from oppression, be loose from depression, be loose from suppression, be loose from disease, in the name of Jesus. Every organ of your body is loose, is loose, is loose. Every organ of your body is loose, is loose. I command your body to be well, to be strong, to be healthy. Receive health manifested in the name of Jesus. I rebuke winds and waves. I rebuke circumstances and situations. I rebuke everything that is contrary. Everything that is contrary to you. Everything that is contrary to you. Everything that is contrary to your peace. Stop in the name of Jesus. Cease no more. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. The devil goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. I stand in faith with everyone under the sound of my voice. Satan, we resist you now in the name of Jesus. I command the devil to get his hands off your finances, off your marriage, off your job, off your career. Satan, get your hands off in the name of Jesus. I lose the things that are yours. Everything that is yours is loose right now. It's loose right now. It's loose right now. It's loose right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. It's loose in the name of Jesus. Gayato la tupa la tobe. Brendando ndo luda mi anda gaskaya. Mreto sekedi batataya. Bereto, bereto, bereto. I rebuke arthritis. I rebuke arthritis. I rebuke arthritis. I rebuke arthritis. Every pain that is harassing your body from your head to your leg, all of those pains that are rattling your body and making life unbearable for you, pain come out in the name of Jesus. Hey, Jacodu. There's, there's a woman here. It comes on your head like needles. And when that pain begins like needles, all of your body is weakened. Sometimes you can hardly stand up. Run out from your seat. I want to lay hands on you right now. I'm seeing that woman under that affliction. It's leaving you today and forever. Where is she? I want to pray for you right now. It comes like needle. You feel it in your head and your body goes weak. And suddenly it's like you can't even stand up sometimes. I want to pray for you. If you're that woman, run to me now. Matula, patila. Patile, patile, lift your two hands up. Merika tola, out, 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 in the name of Jesus. Body be healed, be healed, be healed, be loose from pain, in the name of Jesus. Gebayo talanamanga, mendro do sukaladababa, brende gele de bayota, engere to sukaladababa, brende gere de ge 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 Ila ba 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 ba. Hey hey, brojaka 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 brojaka. Ege botala batala batala batala. Hey masota 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 masota. Come out loose loose loose. Get out of this body in the name of Jesus. Body be well, be well, be well, be well. Be well. And everybody else, under the sound of my voice, watching on Facebook and by television, that condition that has made life unbearable and has taken so much money from you, as your amen is coming like thunder, I command that condition corrected now. Corrected now. Corrected now. Corrected now. Now, 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 now. now. Let me speak to those of you on Facebook and those of you on television who have been under the affliction of the devil. I crush the devil's oppression. Lose your holes right now. Lose your holes right now. Lose your holes right now. In the name of Jesus, your body be loose, your mind be loose, your sight restored, your hearing restored, your body restored, your bones quickened, your organs quickened, energize, 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 rise up and suck that condition 
in the name of Jesus and I speak in this service right now whatever is yours that somebody has sat on and denied you access to your inheritance I shake I shake I shake and I command your stuff to locate your direction receive your jobs receive your monies receive your employment receive promotion receive promotion receive promotion receive your contracts receive your checks receive your checks receive your properties receive your properties receive 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 in the name of jesus wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice i command a tsunami of miracles to overshadow you receive miracles receive miracles receive miracles receive miracles receive miracles what is not in god cannot be in you i say receive miracles thank you my father thank you my father this week you will sing a new song this week you will tell a new testimony i'm not hearing that amen say with me i have jesus i lack nothing say it three times i have jesus i lack nothing two more times